Hello guys, welcome back to Any Sooner. Uh, as always, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and join the family. Uh, we're always excited to have you guys. It was different for me, yeah. They could see the vision, it was crystal to me, yeah. Look at how the tables turn, interestingly, yeah. If it's what it is, that's what it's meant to be, meant to be. Yeah. Tall down on me, yeah. I could never be that what you want me to be, yeah. Welcome back to the Indie Sooner. I'm your boy JP. Uh, glad to be back with you guys. Today we're going to be talking about safeties and running backs. It's supposed to be two separate videos. But it's been a little bit of a hectic week for me. I'm an athletic director. Uh, I'm, I'm getting things ready to go for our spring sports, and so I haven't necessarily had the time as much as I'd like to. Uh, near the end of spring and during summer, I'll have more time uh, to, to actually get out content more, more often and quickly. As right now, though, it's just kind of what it is. So we're going to put the running backs and safeties into one group today, and boy, those are both some great groups to talk about. Uh, so when we look at the defense and everything that Alex Grinch has done since he's got here, one of the things that everybody has always said is, yo, he coaches safeties. So if he coaches safeties, isn't that supposed to be the group that does the best the quickest? And I think that Grinch took that approach well in that, he wants to get his guys in there. He he could do his best to turn around who he who he had in and, and Pat Fields and Delarian Turner Yell, which I think he's done a great job with them. Pat Fields has become better uh, a, as his career has gone on. He's just an incredible leader, a cerebral mind. And on top of that, you have Delarian Turner Yell, who's turned out to be kind of a poor man's Tony Jefferson, if you will. Not not as great of a tackler, but very good tackler. Uh, not the best in coverage, but, but can cover well. Hardly have anything to say uh, negative about Delarian Turner Yell. With that being said, again, the safety position hasn't necessarily been the strongest point, even though that's Alex Grinch's position, right? But he needs to get his guys in there first. And, and he turned around DTY. He turned around Pat Fields. But they're still not his guys. They're not his rangy six foot six two safeties that he would ideally have. And so we have to look at it from that perspective. Now, the biggest turn that he's really made was defensive line, and we'll get into that uh, soon. But he, he sensed that he had some of the guys there that they just need to lose a little bit of weight. And you can see he's turned a lot uh, of the defensive line over. We, I mean, maybe a couple, maybe like Perion and Josh Ellison are guys that have come in kind of off of his merits. But everybody else, I mean, were the, Isaiah Thomas, Ronnie Perkins, right? We're, we're talking about Jordan Kelly that had some flashes. That they were there before, and they've really taken to uh, Grinch's system, especially in the one-gap scheme. And, I mean, we talk about guys like Nick Benito, who's borderline – I mean, not being borderline. He's first-team PFL All-American, but can't make uh, big, the first-team Big 12. He's honorable mention. Are you kidding me? And again, we'll say that for another day. But, again, what Grinch has done already – with that group of guys that were talented but seems to be seem to be limited under Mike Stoops' scheme has been amazing. And so now when we get his guys in there, and again, even the third year of Pete, uh, Pat Fields and DTY, I think the sky's the limit for the safety group. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people think Pat Fields may be able to be usurped um, by a guy of the name of Key Lawrence. Now, here's the thing. I, I don't know if if... Alex is going to use Key Lawrence in the in that safety position, or that, that free safety slot. I've heard uh, just through through Brandon Drum and a couple other people that he's going to have more of the nickel look, and they that, that he's going to be doing some work there. Now again, that doesn't mean he can't drop back and play that from time to time, but I don't know if he's going to straight up usurp Pat Fields in that way. Now one guy <clears throat> that is going to be usurping Pat Fields is potentially Bryson Washington. Now, we've been talking about this kid for a couple years now. People said last year he seemed to be coming on, and once this kid you know, kind of gets his weight under him, it's lights out, right? And so you look at his measurables, we're, we're sitting at 6'2", 192. I mean, that's four inches on Pat Fields, right? And that's perfectly in that Alex Grinch mold that we've been talking about. Alex Grinch loves six foot to six foot three ish, maybe even six foot four at times when we talk about Jordan Mukes, right? Defensive backs, especially his safeties. And he likes them to be fast 
and rangy. And that's exactly what Bryson Washington is. And it's not that Pat Field isn't fast. I I just don't think he we don't think he's that explosive. Again, he he's kind of been the cerebral mind on the defense. He's a just an incredible dude, right? Uh, a student athlete that that really exemplifies everything that you want of an Oklahoma Sooner. Uh, he's he's advocated for student athletes in a lot of ways on campus. Again, nothing bad to say about Patrick Fields, but again, we're talking about performance on the field, right? And not necessarily just if we like somebody. And again, it doesn't mean that Pat Fields has been bad. But again, as Alex Grinch even said earlier this spring, a couple weeks ago, the standard here at Oklahoma was just kind of you wait your turn. Now it's not that. It's it's if you're talented enough, you're going to be on the field. You shouldn't be waiting three years to try to get on the field. If that's happening, that's an issue, right? So looking at it that way, we have to see that, you know, if Bryson's the guy, he's got to usurp Pat Fields regardless of if Pat Fields has started two years in a row, even in the same system. Right. So I, I think we need to really look at that. Bryson Washington is somebody that a lot of people are excited about. Now, here's the other kid I'm talking about. OK, Jordan Mukes. Now, they have him listed as six one. Most people have said that he's six three. So I don't I don't know what the discrepancy is there. I don't know if it's wrong on the website or if it's wrong, wrong just in general that he's not six three. He actually is six one. But regardless, He's got a long wingspan. I think they said he has six seven, six six eight ish type wingspan. Okay, and this is a kid that's raw out of Choctaw, Oklahoma. He's very raw. He's only played three years, I think. I think he started a sophomore year of high school, maybe junior year, and he's just naturally gotten it already enough to get a full ride to Oklahoma University, right? And playing football for two three years, if that, that's insane. So. I think Jordan Meech is going to be somebody that is really, really coming on. He already looks the part. I know a lot of people say, "Yo, you, you know, you got to get in the weight room." You got to look. He looks the part already, and I think a lot of people around OU have said, "Yo, he might be able to get in the in the two deep at the very least, right, and, and make some strides and make some uh, make some plays this year." And so again, there's not a lot of depth per se, at that safety position. Now, he may switch guys out back and forth right between the nickel and the safety slot. So we'll, we'll talk about a couple other um, nickel guys that I'll, I'll cover halfway today and halfway uh, when we look at the cornerback slash defensive back group. And so um, those other <clears> – <throat> excuse me. Sorry, my phone is jacking up. I like to, you know, have – make sure I have all the, the measurements written down and everything and – uh, I had to take some screenshots because, again, I didn't have time to write it down today. So I uh, just thought, thought I'd pull it up really quick. So, again, this other group we're looking at is going to be people that are working in the nickelback position. So we're talking about Billy Bowman, right, that freshman that we put out of Texas that everybody says all world. You got Keith Lawrence, like I said, that, that may kind of flip-flop between nickelback and potentially safety. Again, he's another guy. He's I mean, 6'1", 207, looks the part. Um, transfer out of Tennessee that, that played a lot of snaps for them. So, again, he has a ton of experience. Once he learns the defense, a lot of people think the sky's the limit for him. Uh, then we got Justin Harrington, who we've heard about since last year. He came in last year, uh, had, had a knee issue, didn't get to play at all, hardly got to practice. Now he's coming on. Um, now that's somebody who, who I've seen – has apparently moved to cornerback. So we may leave that for that that discussion for that time, but it's just spring. Again, this is a spring preview, so we're just going to say it as it is right now. On the spring roster, he's going to be listed as a cornerback. Uh, so uh, maybe he, he can look get a look at Nickelback. I know a lot of people thought he'd get a look there. I don't know. Uh, Grinch sees something, and I'm – look, and Grinch we trust, right, at the, at the end of the day. So – <clears throat> that's another guy. Uh, and then Kendall Dennis was another guy that's been uh, rumored to be there. Uh, one guy I did forget, I don't know how this slipped my mind, Jeremiah Cradell, I think is somebody who is going to be the heir apparent. Apparently, that's what we've heard, at least, um, at the nickelback position. Alex Grinch was quoted as saying that he's never had a player make quite a jump that um, Jeremiah Cradell has made this spring. That's saying something, right? I mean, you look at look at some of the guys Alex Grinch has coached. I mean, he's at Ohio State, right? He, he coached a couple of their DBs, uh, <clears throat> Jeff Okuda, to be, for instance, right? And I know he was only there one year, but even still, uh, you go back to Washington State, Hercules Mataafa, right? The guy that was, you know, what, 6'3", very undersized, 
250, I think, defensive tackle, but became like a second team All American AP that year uh, under, under Grinch. Uh, out of all, everybody he's ever coached, right? You're talking about Kenneth Murray. We're talking about Neville Gallon. We're talking about Ronnie Perkins, Nick Benito, even, because Nick Benito made a crazy jump. He's saying out of everybody he's ever coached, Jeremiah Cradell has made the biggest jump he's seen. That's saying something. So we need to be looking. Again, it's spring, but still, for him to say that, and Grinch does not, he does, he's not giving out handouts. He's not that type of coach. For him to say that, it's a big deal. So I think we need to be looking forward to Jeremiah Cradell and seeing what he can do. Um, but again, just the safety position, I think there's a lot to be desired still. Uh, I don't think we've seen their best football. Um, we're lo really looking forward to it this year. Uh, I think the scheme that Alex Grinch employs allows the safeties to <clears throat> kind of help the middle linebacker control the defense. And again, it allows him to kind of be free range. He, he, he gives DTY sometimes the ability to go in there and be a box type of safety uh, when he needs to help with the run game and the run fits. But at the same time, uh, there's plenty of, there's plenty of opportunity for Patrick Fields <clears throat> to break on balls. There's just not been a ton all the time, right, of, of plays that have been made by Patrick Fields or DTY in the, in the interception game. We saw Trey Norwood, who, who uh, slide, slide back to that, I can't, I'm tired, guys. I can't talk today. Uh, slid back to that nickel slash safety position at times last year. Really come on and have a lot to say about <clears throat> uh, what could be done in that position. He had five picks last year. I mean, so much so he left and went to the league. Uh, and again, I, I I love Trey. I think, I mean, I, honestly, I think Trey's a, a round five, round six guy. And if that's what he felt like his ceiling was, I guess, like, I, I think he could have came back for another year. But that's neither here nor there. Trey Norwood had one of the best seasons that a defensive back for Oklahoma has had probably since Zach Sanchez, if we're being real, right? So that's something that is left to be desired between our safeties and even the nickelback position is somebody that can consistently make plays like that. We lost Trey Norwood last year. We're going to need somebody to step up this year. Maybe DTY takes a step. Maybe Pat Fields does. Maybe Bryson Washington usurps him. Maybe Jordan Meeks gets him get some play, Key Lawrence, all those guys, right? It's exciting, right? We're talking about the defense, and it's not like we're talking about guys that are like, they're bad. And we just, I can't believe it. No, they're good. They're good, but we're not looking for good. We're looking for elite, and that's the difference between Mike Stoops-led defense of the last couple of years and Alex Grinch's defense as it is now. He shifted the culture, which is something we love. Don't forget, uh, leave, leave some comments in the section. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, anything you felt like I missed, uh, go ahead and drop it in the comment box down below. Uh, happy to talk about it in the next video. Happy to chat with you. Um, moving on, running backs. This is a group that is insanely, insanely talented uh, going back into this year. Now, I got in a little argument with some Texas fans uh, today specifically, but e e let's let's back it up. <clears throat> I, I, I had um, one of my buddies on Twitter, he hit me up and he said, yo, me and a couple other uh, Sooner Twitter guys hit us up and say, yo, what is it about Texas that they're a sleeping football giant, that they could be Alabama if they really wanted to? And, and is this true? Can they out-recruit Oklahoma all the time, et cetera? Look, <clears throat> there's no doubt in my mind that if Texas had the correct boosters, the correct culture there, not even just football-wise, but just like as an athletic department or as a university, I, yeah, sure, like – they have, and I've said this forever, they have the most resources in college football. They have more resources than Alabama. Alabama just has all their resources because they won national championships. And they're a blue blood, don't get me wrong. They had resources, but they've won, like, what, five, six national championships in the last 10, 11 years? So, of course, they're going to have a bunch of resources. But even with that, Texas has more resources and spends more money on recruiting. So... That just shows you what type of brand and what type of um, just ability, honestly, that Texas has. And, and they've recruited well. They've mostly, honestly, out-recruited OU for the better part of the decade. It's just that they haven't developed anybody. And so, yeah, like, Texas is a sleeping giant. And I, I have no problem saying that. Even as an OU fan, I can acknowledge that and say that it's true. It is true. Now, I, I like them to wake up because it's going to look better when OU smacks them, right? And I still think OU has clearly been the better program of all time. But even even that being said, I, I would rather trample on a Texas that is playing at its best. They're at their best 
that they've ever been. They, they're you know hitting on all cylinders. Shark is doing well. Coach K on defense is doing well. All, all those things are hitting, and we still beat them by 14, right? That's what you want, right? That's what LSU wanted, or excuse me, <clears throat> that's what uh, LSU wanted out of Alabama. Like when when LSU finally beat Alabama, it's not like they, or excuse me, Alabama went at LSU. Like L- LSU hit got them one year, that's okay. But Alabama will tell you they they'd rather LSU be really good so that when they beat them, it's looks better on them than as it, than um, if it was LSU who was just trash and Alabama could railroad them all the time. You know what I mean? So it, it's, it's the same thing as far as that goes because we're the big dogs in the Big 12. And we have been forever, six straight, right? Where's Texas at? We've been saying that. Where's Texas at? We're not scared. Everybody thinks we're scared. No, we want y'all to come along with us. And so all that to say, I, I got in an argument with a, with a Texas fan today who he's more of a troll, but, you know, sometimes you got to engage him. Uh we were talking about our running backs, and he's like, man, Texas has, had, Texas has better running backs than OU ever, all the time. And you know what? Like, Texas has had really good running backs, but, but OU's been way more consistent in running backs. Like, yeah, Texas has had a uh, Herschel, excuse me, Herschel Walker, that's Georgia, excuse me, uh, and Earl Campbell. Yeah, they've had a Ricky Williams. Deontay Foreman was pretty good. Not that good, but even still, Cedric Benson, too, right? Like, great backs. Don't get me wrong. OU's just been more consistent. Like, a- AP is better than all three of those backs. Not combined, but he was be- he's better and had a better pro career than all three of those backs. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've had DeMarco Murray. We've had Billy Sims. We've had Steve Vessels. Like, we, we've, and we've been just been way more consistent, honestly, in, in the running back room and running back position. And so, again, it's not that Texas hasn't even recruited, hasn't had talent there at the running back position. They just haven't used it well. And so when we think about that, we have to look at, yo, Texas has an issue developing. OU does not have an issue developing. They've rarely ever had an issue developing, and they really don't have an issue getting talent. Now, they, they're, there's this big clamoration, or all this clamor and noise that, oh, you can't close my running backs, and our running back room isn't good because we lost Kamar Wheaton, who is an enigma, and w- nobody knew what was going to happen with that. I don't blame DeMarco for that one. I blame Jay Bulwer, first of all. But even still, nobody knew what was going to happen with Kamar. And then the same thing with, um, I forgot, I even, I even forgot dude's name. I should remember his name, but he's not with us, so it, it, you can tell that it's not on my, on my mind. But um, dude that, that left us, Jace McClellan, that left us for Alabama, like, that's on Jay Bulwer too. It's not because it's not because Oklahoma is a trash school. It's not because Oklahoma doesn't produce great running backs. Honestly, Alabama is is the best at it right now. I have no problem saying that because that's just the truth. So I, I get why somebody want to go there. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, why Kamar want to go there and, and and sit three years? That look, that's on him. And especially with the, how loaded they are, they have like six freshman running backs. Uh, that's on him. That's his decision. I don't think there's anything DeMarco could have done better. Kamar was an enigma anyway. Nobody knew where he was going to go. So there, there's nothing to be said. We're in the lead for Gavin Schwab. We have Raleigh Brown in, in the boat. So I, I people are freaking out for no reason. And our running back room is stacked anyway. It's stacked. So chill out. We're still we're still going to be on the national championship run this year. Okay. That being said, again, I'm long winded. Let's dive into the running backs. We have Kennedy Brooks coming back, uh, thousand yard rusher, two years in a row. Opted out last year because of COVID. Excited, concerned. They didn't really know how it was going to work out. He'd just rather be safe. Him and his family made that decision. Everybody understood it. He came back. Decided he want to come back this year and be part of the team. Of course, they're going to receive him. Uh, Kennedy Brooks is a great guy. He's been somebody that's been great for OU, and he's underrated. Um, I, I think that for a lot of people, they don't realize what he does well, which is, again, mesh with the O-line, read their blocks really well. He may not have blazing speed. I mean, he might be a 4-5 guy. Um, he's not the shiftiest. He makes good cuts, but he's not the shiftiest. He's not the most exciting, but he he's solid. He is more than solid. And I, I think that's really all you can ask for out of a, out of a running back who, you know, has <laughs> had – to multiple thousand yard seasons like it works and he works well right like I, I think that in my opinion I, I said Ramondre Stevenson was the best running back in 2019 I truly I still believe that it's nothing against Kenny Brooks I think Kenny Brooks is uh, a high level running back I don't think he's elite 
I'm just going to be real with you. You can you can disagree with me, and I know he ran for two thousand yard seasons. I gave him his props. He's very very good. He's not that elite. He doesn't have that elite speed. And I don't think he has that elite cutting ability. Again, doesn't mean you can't be really good, especially when you have a great offensive line. He reads blocks so well, and that's part of what makes him really really good. Okay, and he can hit the holes. Okay, good enough. And again, he he's had two thousand yard season, so like. <laughs> He doesn't have to prove anything to me. Like I said, I, I'm grateful to have him in the room. Okay, and, I, and obviously, I think it's his his job to either lose or share. Okay, we'll just we'll just go with that. But we're excited to have Kenny Brooks now. Marcus Major is somebody who has been hyped up right by JD Reynolds for years. Uh, I, I think that last year, you know, everybody expected him that to be the year he kind of took off. Obviously, they didn't get a spring. Obviously, we had COVID to to think about, but. He showed some flashes, you know, when he, I remember that the one cut he made against Texas and scored a touchdown, that was really nice. Uh, I think that we have a lot to look forward to from Marcus Major. We've heard so many good things. We're just waiting for him to put it together. Again, he's having a nice spring again. It's what we've heard. Nothing new. We've heard he's had a nice spring. We've heard he's had a nice fall. We'd like to see him uh, kind of put it on the field. And again, it's going to be hard. Like, this is a stacked running back one. You have Kenny Brooks, Right. Now, now we just talked about Marcus Major, and that's not even mentioning Seth McGowan, who's a monster, right? And I, I think, I think if he gets just a little faster, man's gonna be a dog, right? Like he, 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 he should have scored that touchdown against Florida, lost out on some endurance, but that's okay. He has the burst and the speed to hit the holes he needs to hit. Okay, sometimes he got a little too shifty, like. Way too shifty last year to the point where he'd lose yards. But that's, again, his youth showing. I think another year in the strength and conditioning program, and then on top of that, you have another year of him just learning the offense, learning what reads to to see, um, learning how to what holes to hit, how the offensive line meshes, and where he should go instead of dancing, just getting north and south. There's a lot to be said for what he can do. Okay, And then you talk about Eric Gray coming in from Tennessee. Kennedy talked about it the other day. He said Eric Gray's a dog. And they said Eric Gray may have the chance to be the number one. And to literally be the guy that is that home run running back that honestly OU's been looking for since Rodney. Okay. And again, like I said, nothing against Kenny Brooks. Nothing really even against Ramon Jay. We, we only got to see really probably half of what Ramon Jay could do. Uh, and Ramon Jay wasn't a home run back per se. You know what I mean? But... You guys understand what I'm saying. The first guy really since Rodney that could be that number one, that that home run guy that is just bang. That's Eric Gray. Okay, so again, when we go back to talking about Marcus Major, he's got to go through Kennedy Brooks, Seth McGowan, who already has a, another year of, of stealing carries from him, basically, and then Eric Gray, who came in. Okay, those are your top three backs. That's tough. And the fact that though you have those four guys, that's tough. TJ Pledger had to go. He knew he wasn't gonna there wasn't gonna be room. It just is what it is, you know what I mean? And then we look at Mikey Henderson being moved to the running back or being moved to the running back room. Dog, come on now. Mikey Henderson's a monster. He's six two, right? We talked about him in the tight end ace back video. He's been moved to the running back position. I think solely so they can get the ball in his hands more. That's what I said. I said Mikey needs the ball in his hands more. Lincoln Riley knows it. All of OU Nation knows it. It's just what it is. I said this on my last video. He might be the most electric sooner to touch the ball as far as a running back goes since Joe Mixon. And again, not that Rodney wasn't electric. Don't hear me say that. But you know when Joe touched the ball, it was different. It was different. When... Mikey Henderson touched the ball last year. It was different. And everybody could feel it. Everybody could feel the energy when he touched the ball, all the moves he made. I don't even know if he had a negative play last year. He seemed to always get 5 to 10 yards. And then sometimes broke it for more. So putting him at the running back position, Lincoln Riley's just a genius because it's going to have him utilize him even more. It's not doesn't mean he's going to completely not be in, in some Dimitri Flowers slash – uh, Trey Miller, Jeremiah Hall type packages, but they're going to use him in so many ways. Cause think about it. In the when they go uh, in the pistol with the the two split backs, 
Think about Mikey Henderson in a Kennedy Brooks, or Mikey Henderson in an Eric Gray, or Mikey Henderson in a Seth McCown dog, right? Mikey Lee blocking, or them faking it and giving it to Mikey the other way. It's just... Or Mikey having a pop pass out of that, bro. Like, there's so many ways he can be utilized. And I think that's what Lincoln Riley saw. And it's not that he can't block. It's not that he can't put his hand in the ground, right? Like like a Hall, like a Stogner, like a Willis. But is that where he's best utilized? And that's, what, that's why Riley has been as great as he has. That's why he's developed as many players as he has. is because he puts them in the correct position. So that they can do what they need to do. That's why I told this dude on Twitter today, OU is going to tear up Texas DBs. Right? You had, um, I forget what these, is it Josh Thompson? I think that's who it is. Josh Thompson over here talking about Lincoln Riley's brisket and stuff like that. And then somebody quote tweeted him and said, oh, you need to worry about you not getting like, you know, burned that bad or something like that. And then he posted uh, this graphic that says, oh, Texas DBs haven't allowed a touchdown, 350 snaps. Okay. And, and so then Bryson Washington posts C.D. Lamb. Just, you remember 2019 when he caught the ball, shifted three guys, and scored the touchdown, right? And, and, and Josh was a part of that. So I just said, yo, listen. Our wide receivers are going to cook y'all this year. And it's not even that they're bad. I don't, like, I think Texas the defense backs are pretty good. OU's just going to be that elite. And I can't wait to talk about the wide receiver room. But when you when you combine the running back room as it is now with the wide receivers that we have, who are you going to guard? And it's not it's not the fact of like who are you going to give the ball to. No, it's not. This ain't this ain't the NFL. Like they all want to run natty. Okay, this is this is literally literally the most talent I've seen on offense personally since. I mean, I guess if you want to say last year, that's fine. Right with Alabama, uh, and, and you know they had Smith and Waddles kind of there. Mechie, uh, Najee Harris, Mac Jones. Okay, Smith and Riley's better than Mac Jones. Okay, that's what I have there. I no Najee's not Najee's better than any back that OU has right now. I think that as far as experience goes, to this year the depth is better at the running back position, wide receiver position. I think it's just as good personally. Right, all across the board, Devontae Smith, Devontae Smith, Jay Wall, they're both first round picks. I think you have a lot of guys that could be first round picks in OU's room. And again, they they still have to show on the field, don't get me wrong. But when you look at it, Jaden Hazelwood, who had his ACL torn, didn't really get to play last year, Trajan Bridges, who apparently might be the best out of all of them, the, the trio of five stars that came in a couple of years ago, but was suspended, didn't play at all last year. And then Theo Weiss, right, who again, five star in his own right. And then you could you combine that with Marvin Mims, who came out of nowhere last year and is now seen as the OU's number one with those three guys. on. Like, imagine having to guard those four guys in a spread offense. And then you got Stog lined up at tight end. And then you got a split backfield with Mikey and Eric Gray. What are you going to do, bro? You see what I'm saying? And then because we know as Oklahoma fans that, you know, we're not just an air raid offense like some – Stupid fans out there like to think that don't actually pay attention to football. We know that it's predicated off the run game. The run game is going to be solid. I think it's going to be more than solid. I think the offensive line is going to be better. We'll talk about that. And also, I think the running back room is just a, a, a step ahead of where it was last year because of the additions of Eric Gray and Kennedy Burks coming back. Okay? And then you got a better Spencer Rattler this year. It's going to be, it's going to be crazy out there for them. Who are you going to guard? Right when 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 Kenny Brooks and Eric Gray have back gashed you for back to back fifteen yard runs, and then we do a play action, we get Marvin Mims over the top. We have uh, Theo Weiss going on <clears throat> a post. Or excuse me, not even not even Theo Weiss. Let's not even say Theo Weiss. Let's say Jaden Hazelwood going across the middle on a post. Okay, Let, let's say Trajan Bridges uh, going across the other middle, crossing, crossing routes. Okay, and then you got um, <clears throat> Theo Weiss going on the little sooner drag that Lincoln Riley likes to do that he's made famous. What are you going to do? That's a, that's just what I'm talking about. And then you have, you're have you going to have Stog going out for a pop pass as a safety blanket. I mean, it's, it's just hard. It's going to be hard. And I feel bad for the defenses that have to play us this year. I, I just genuinely do. So, 
All that to be said, guys, this is going to be an exciting year. I've said this for, for years. 2021 was a year. Before we even knew everything that materialized this year, which makes us even more excited, I've been saying since 2019, 2021 is a year since we got Grinch. Okay, it's going to be Grinch's third year. He's going to have a couple of his guys in there. The defense hopefully is turned around by then. And Lincoln Riley's Lincoln Riley. It's going to be Spencer Rattler's second year. He's going to be better. Where are we at? Everybody's choosing OU to go to the playoffs. A lot of people are choosing them to win it all. Genuinely. Go look around college football. See, see who's the favorites. You got a, a, a veteran quarterback returning for the first time in four years. It's crazy. Okay. Who was had an amazing freshman season. Who's going to be a Heisman finalist. Okay. You have fast break on grass with the receivers you have. You have an incredible running back group. Incredibly talented. Your offensive line is returning your two stud guards. Okay. You, you did lose your stud center, probably the best center you almost ever had. But you, you do get to replace it with a Chris Murray or Ian McIver. Ian McIver is a redshirt senior. He knows offense well, can can step in there and do a great job. Chris Murray is super talented, but he's still learning. But he's a four-star transfer from UCLA who started every game he played there. Then you get Wanya Morris to show up the left tackle side. He's going to be fired. Anton Harrison, who Bill Beatenbow said as of yesterday, has the potential to be one of the best offensive linemen OU's ever had. Bill Beatenbow doesn't speak lightly. You see what I'm? Do you understand what I'm saying now? Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? The offensive line is just it's all shaping up. And then our defense again is going to be good for the third year. Our defensive line is going to be nasty. They're going to be nasty. We've already been over the linebackers. We've been over the safeties. Our cornerback is the deepest it's been since Zach Sanchez was here with Jordan Thomas. I don't know what happened in 2016. Don't ask me. But 2015, Zach Sanchez, Jordan Thomas. It's the deepest it's been. This is our year. If we don't win it this year, or at least get to it this year, I don't know what to tell you. I just don't know what to tell you. So, with that being said, uh, we're going to look forward to doing uh, another video I'll, I'll drop uh, by the end of the week. We'll, we'll double up again uh, so that you know we don't we don't miss each other. Thank you guys for, for being patient with me. Uh, as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Join the family. Follow me on Twitter at Indy underscore Sooner. Join the family. Love you guys. We'll see you soon. Boomer.